He's not charged with any crime at this point. So you shoot a man, almost kill him, and then there's no charges. No charges until now. Two former East Point police officers are charged with breaking the law while on duty. Just indicted by a Fulton County grand jury. They shot the suspected car thief who was running away from them and he was paralyzed from the neck down. We have been following this story since 2019. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Ron Jones. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy. After the two former officers are booked, they will fight the charges against them, insisting that this tragic shooting more than three years ago was justified. Here's John Sherrick with the update. Was he the author of his own misfortune, paralyzed for life from the neck down, or was he the victim of police officers using excessive force against him? Devin Nolly, a suspected car thief back in December 2018, police ultimately stopped him on I-285, and he was running away, unarmed, into the woods. Now a Fulton County grand jury is charging the two East Point police officers who shot Nally in the back as he ran away, paralyzing him. Rodney Etienne and Sharon Nicole Varner are charged with felonies, including aggravated assault. The DA's office has determined that no matter what my client had did, that the officers used excessive force. And that's the real issue in this case. Jackie Patterson of the Atlanta law firm The Bentley Lawyer represents Nolly in his $30 million lawsuit against the officers and the city of East Point. Nolly lives now in a facility in West Georgia where he got the news the officers were indicted. He certainly feels like there's some justice with thrill that the district attorney took action on this case. But Atlanta attorney Don Samuel, who represents now former East Point police officer Rodney Etienne, says that during an earlier part of the chase, Nolly is the one who attacked the officer, tried to drive into him, so the shooting later at the end of the chase was justified. He was a clearly a fleeing felon. He posed a danger to the community. He had just committed an aggravated assault on the police officers. And they have an obligation to apprehend the fleeing felon, use the force that's necessary to do so. So so was it justified use of force or was it excessive force? All of it now in the hands of the courts. That was John Sherrick reporting for us tonight. By the way, as for the accusations that Nolly was driving a stolen car and tried to run it into police. Well, at this point, there are no jail records or court records that we've been able to find to confirm whether Nolly was ever charged after he was shot and paralyzed.